Welcome everyone to Inspiration Fine Arts 2021. My name is Mallory. And my name is Kai. And for our class, we're going to be teaching you all about literary devices. And for our first lesson specifically, we're going to be talking about metaphors and similes. So a little bit about us. My name is Kai and I'm on the right in this picture. And my name is Mallory, and I'm on the left in that picture. Both of us are seniors that go to Carnegie Bank of High School, and we both turn 18 in September. We have many years of experience in poetry, spoken word, and debate. Okay, here's our table of contents and what we'll be doing today. So first, we're going to go over some definitions, and then we have a fun little video for you all to watch. Then we're going to go over some examples, and then you guys will have a chance to practice on your own. Yes. Okay. So this is our lesson plan for the coming weeks. Today is our intro and metaphors and similes. Next week, we'll talk about personification, hyperbole, and imagery. Week three will be onomatopoeia and alliteration. Week four is mood, tone, and theme. And week five, we'll talk about rhetorical appeals, and then week six will be a review of all the things we've learned. Okay, so for our first definition, what are literary devices? A literary device is a technique or an element that a writer uses to convey their message to the reader. Um, this can be to add um, aesthetics or just to embellish your writing or it can be to add some complexity um, for the reader to um, have while reading your writing. Um, it's entirely up to the writer. So metaphor is a figure of speech that describes an object or action in a way that isn't literally true, but helps explain an idea or makes a comparison. A simile is a figure of speech in which two dissimilar objects or concepts are compared with one another through the use of like or as. So in both metaphor and simile, two unlike things are compared with each other to better describe one of those things. In similes, we use like or as. In metaphors, we do not. We make a direct comparison. So here's a video you all are trying to watch to help you better learn about metaphors and similes. Like butter. When you like to have comparisons, it's a 
Y'all can see your best. The education is fresh. Y'all gonna love this one. Beats stay banging like hammers. This short's hot as the sun. Similes are an explicit comparison. To safeguard writers from sounding outrageous and embarrassing. Let's more similes. Similes. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Yes. Okay. So, okay. okay, now we're going to go into our examples. Um, first, we're going to look at some sentences where we'll see metaphors and similes used in simple sentences. And then we're going to take a look at how they're used in passages. And then finally, we'll take a look at how they're used in poems. So first, for our simple sentences, for metaphor, we have I am titanium, love is a battlefield, and heart of gold. Um, these are all song lyrics. You may be familiar with them. So looking at the first one, I am titanium. A person is comparing themselves to a metal. Obviously a person is not a, a metal. It's a, a figure of speech. They are comparing themselves to this metal because they feel they are strong and invincible like titanium. Same thing with love is a battlefield. A battlefield is dangerous and confusing and difficult. And that's the view this person has on love. These comparisons, these metaphors make us understand the concept that the writer, or in this case songwriter, is trying to display. And then for similes we have, you are as brave as a lion, fight like cats and dogs, he was as strong as an ox. For the first one, someone is comparing their own bravery or someone else's bravery to that of a lion. And this just shows that because we view lions as very extremely brave, they're also saying this person is brave. It makes what they're saying that more, that much more vivid and understandable about how the writer felt about this person. Same thing with he was as strong as an ox. Obviously a human being does not have the capabilities to be as strong as an ox, but the whoever wrote this is trying to display to their audience that the person they are speaking of is very, very strong, like that of an ox. Okay, now let's look at some metaphors and similes used in passages. So on the left, you'll find a passage, well, a snippet of a passage called The Sniper. Um, and I want you guys to kind of read it on your own. And see um, if you can understand the metaphor that is used. So I'll give you guys a minute to do so. Okay, so I'm just gonna read over it and then talk about the metaphor that is highlighted. So it says, the sniper could hear the dull panting of the motor. 
His heart beat faster. It was an enemy car. He wanted to fire, but he knew it was useless. His bullets would never pierce the steel that covered the gray monster. So, if you notice in this um, metaphor, you kind of have to use context from the previous sentence to understand what the writer is talking about. So, in the third sentence, it was an enemy car. And then in the last sentence, it says his bullets would never pierce the steel that covered the gray monster. So um, the writer kind of replaced enemy car with gray monster. Um, a car is not necessarily a monster, but that was their way of comparing the two. And on the right, we have a small snippet from A Wrinkle in Time. You guys might have heard of that book or the movie. And I, got, I want to give you guys a minute to read over this passage and understand the simile that is used. Okay, so it says the curtains with a blue and green geometrical pattern were drawn and seemed to reflect their cheerfulness throughout the room. The furnace purred like a great sleepy animal. The lights glowed with a steady radiance outside alone in the dark. Okay, so the, similis, the simile is the highlighted sentence and it says the furnace purred like a great, sleep, a great sleepy animal. So a furnace is like a fireplace, and it didn't necessarily purr like an animal, but they're comparing the sounds of the fire bellowing and possibly the movements of the fire to purring like a great sleepy animal. So now for poetry. For a metaphor, we have Hope by Emily Dickinson. Hope. Uh, I'll give you guys a second to read this excerpt from the passage by yourself, and then we'll go over the metaphor. Okay, so this says, Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. So you can see in the first line, hope is the thing with feathers, is our metaphor. Emily Dickinson is comparing hope to something with feathers, a bird, and then goes on to describe what a thing with feathers, our bird, does, and describes that as hope. And in poetry, what you'll see a lot of times is a thing called extended metaphor, which means instead of just giving us a simple sentence with a metaphor, an entire poem or an entire section of a poem will be a metaphor. It'll be comparing two unlike things um, to again create a more vivid image or to create more understanding from the audience. Um, and sometimes it is a little more difficult to learn what the metaphor is. So in this one, hope is being compared to a bird and a bird has feathers, it perches, it sings a tune, um, and it's comparing this to what hope is in people. For simile, we have Harlem by Langston Hughes. And the excerpt, I'll give you guys a second to read it. So it says, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore in the night? So you see our first line is asking a question about a dream deferred, which means a dream that is given up, so lost hope. And the next line is, it does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore in the night? So the poet Langston Hughes is comparing a dream deferred to a raisin, to a raisin in the sun or a fest or a sore that has festered and by using like um, in this poem. 
Okay, so for practice, now it's your turn. So I have put six sentences um, listed, as you can see, on the slide. And I want you guys to try and identify if there is a simile or metaphor used in each sentence. Um, if you can do that, that's great. Um, if you need to rewatch this video and figure out how to identify the sentences, then you can do that. And you can also try and write your own metaphors and similes at home. You can pick two items or anything and try to compare them to something else. Um, you, you can use like or as to create a simile or try to compare compare two things without using that to create a metaphor. Um, that's all for today's lesson. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you guys go watch all the other Inspiration Fine Arts YouTube videos. We can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Miriam. And I'm Ellie, and we're your IFA co-founders. Thank you so much for watching. And we hope you learned something and enjoy the video. If you click the link at the top of this video, you can find more in this art series. And we encourage you to send us photos or videos of you completing the art. If you look down in the description box below, you can find our website, more information about Inspiration Fine Arts, and our social media channels. And until then, Go, Go find, find your inspiration! inspiration.